Shalom, covering the mind, Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live here on World Harvest Television Network. Those of you that were here with us last week, we're getting into the Chaldeans. Uh, who are the Chaldeans? And in fact, who is Babylon? Speaking of mystery Babylon in modern times there. And last week we left off with just reading over the book of Habakkuk in chapter 1. Of course, those of you that remember, we were going into uh, Jeremiah chapter 50. Didn't get into Jeremiah chapter 51 so much, but looking at Babylon, and of course the Chaldeans are mentioned there. We were setting the stage with uh, over in the book of uh, Daniel, chapter 3, first in chapter 2, a little bit out of, out of sync there, but the purpose was, was to show you how that the Chaldeans are not Tip, actually the Babylonians, even in future prophecy, uh, we see that the Chaldeans are the military arm for Babylon uh, in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, his son as well, and also in the future with Mystery Babylon, we would find out that the Chaldeans are once again the military arm for Mystery Babylon. And uh, when we get in here into to Habakkuk chapter uh, 1 here, looking at the very first verse all the way down to verse 11, it got really interesting. And now we're going to take this week and we're going to break down those prophecies there. So I trust that you're going to enjoy this. I believe it'll be a blessing to you, blessing to me as well. Uh, those of you that didn't get to see it on World Harvest Television Network, you'll be able to catch this on Israeli News Live on our YouTube channel. Also, our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Check out our website. And if you want to support the work we do here, your help is greatly appreciated. You're the ones that help keep this broadcast on the air, and we thank you for that. So let's get right into the, the message again here as we go into the next part here, breaking down the book of Habakkuk, starting with chapter 1 here. Now, we're going to pick up with verse 3 here instead of verse 1 this time, but let me just share something with you. You're going to see a compound meaning and the scriptures here. So I'm going to kind of go through it as we go and share with you both sides of what I'm seeing here and what we see prophecy in, new, in the news itself, what is happening in the world today, and it's going to startle you, I believe. Anyway, it startled me as I read it. Why dost thou show me iniquity and behold us mischief? And why are, are spoiling and violence before me so that their strife and contention ariseth. Therefore the law is slacked, and right doth never go forth. For the wicked doth beset the righteous, therefore right goeth forth perverted. All right, let me, let's turn to the screen here, behind here. I have things in, in red here. The law is slacked, actually it's the Torah. Okay, Alkin tafuk tafuk Torah. All right, the, the, the law is they're slacking. They're not doing the law as, as, it, as it should be done here. But here's where it gets interesting. Right doth never go forth, for the wicked doth beset the righteous. All right? In other words, they're, they're not bringing forth justice is actually the, 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 probably the best way to do the wording here. Because right here, mi shapat is the word for justice or judgment. So they're not doing the right kind of judgment. The Torah is not being brought out right. Why? This has everything to do with the Chaldeans and what the Chaldeans are doing. Okay? They're not bringing forth the right judgment. Why? Ki rasha, because the wicked, all right, mikater et hatsadik. Now they say on here that they are, they beset the righteous. I think King James says they're roundabout. Well, you know, my middle name is Katriel. Katriel means the crown of God. Stephen, as you would say in English. That's why I have Stephen for the first name. Well, this word right here, Chetav, uh, excuse me, yeah, Chetav Yod Reish here is Kater, which is the crown, but it's without the word God. And it can be beset. It can be besieged. You can use it that way. But it's also used for the word crown. Uh, this is very important because it says the law is slack. The Torah, they're not keeping the Torah the way they should. They, write, they, they doth never go forth. You know, the right judgment never goes forth. For the wicked, the rasha, they doth, as they say, beset, or they have, in other words, they're, they're messing with the crown of the righteous. Hmm. Therefore, right goeth forth perverted. 
Now, if you think about it in the context of what it's saying here, and you could still use the word beset, but if you think about the context, therefore, right goeth forth perverted. Akin yotse mishpat, okay, which is literally, and upon, therefore, uh, going out from the judgment, me ukal. The judgment is going out perverted. Why? Because the crown, your head, what's inside of here is being perverted. Now, there's a lot of scriptures that go with that. Let's get Proverbs chapter 14. Just to show you that Keter, or Kater, Kater, I like my name there. It says, The thoughtless come into possession of folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Once again, Ikater, Yakateru. All right. So that is the crowned with what? Da'at, knowledge or knowing. All right. So in this case here, then, if we go back and look at that once again, the crown, Kirasha Makiter. So the wicked doth crown, they're, they're dealing with the crown of the righteous. What are they doing to the crown of the righteous? They're doing something that causes the, the judgment of the righteous to be perverted. Now the question is, is what? That's a good question. I may not necessarily know the answer, but there's some biblical insights here that might very well tell us what the answer is. Look at Lamentations chapter 5, for example. The joy of our heart is ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe unto us, for we have sinned for this our heart is faint, for, the, for, for these things our eyes are dim. Now, in Hebrew right here, it doesn't use the same word for crown as it does in, uh, in the previous passages, uh, kater, uh, kater. All right? In this case here, it's using a different word. But the, still, the, the, the point, because there's three different ways you can use, say the word for crown. All right? Uh, Katriel is the crown of God. Okay, Kater. Kater is one way. Then we have the other ways as well. Na, uh, nafala is, mean, is the word for falling. You know, from our head. Uh, the Rashanu, that's our head. And of course, right here in the middle, uh, Aterot, Toret. This is another word for the word crown. But the point is, is the crown has fallen from their head, and as a result, their eyes are dim. And if you can't see, because see, you know how we say, in English, we say, oh, I can see that. I get that. Right? Do you know in the Hebrew, we use the same word. The same terminology is used in Hebrew. Okay? I see. Or I know. Ani yodea. I know. Ani You know? I see. And it's the same terminology, the same idiom that you might say in, in Hebrew is used in English as well. So, if their eyes are dim, they're not seeing spiritually. For this, our heart is faint. For these things, our eyes are dim. All right? Now, let's look at what Jeremiah says. Now, I've brought this out before. Maybe not on World Harvest Net Television Network here, but I have brought this one out before as well. Very interesting. The children also of Noph and Taphanes feed upon the crown of thy head. Is it not this that doth cause it unto thee that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way and now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt to drink the waters of Shihor or what hast thou to do in the, in the way of Assyria to drink the waters of the river? Now this is also where the prophet Jeremiah says you have forsaken me the fountain of living water which is Yeshua Jesus Christ, you have forsaken me the fountains of living water and you have hewed yourselves out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. And why have they done that? Christ is the one. He is, he is that rock that was smitten in the wilderness. He is the rock that on, 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 when he was hanging on the cross, the Roman soldier stuck the spear in his side and both water and blood come from his side showing that he was the same rock in the wilderness. And when the water and the blood separated, it showed that he was a sacrificial lamb because what did they do in the temple? They would take water, pour it onto the, after the animal was killed, wash it out, and out the side of the temple would come the blood and the water. He was the house of God. All right? And in this case right here, 
What do we see? Noph and Tophanes, and according to Arabic uh, historians, Noph, they believe, is part of the Nephilim. And what are they doing? They're feeding. They're right there in Hebrew. Let's look at it right here. They feed upon the crown, right? Gambanen Noph, and the sons of Noph, ve Tophanim, Tophanus, okay? What do they do? Yoroch, Ka, Kad, Kod. See, they feed on your brain, the crown of your head. What is it? They're trying to block your DNA. That's what they're doing. So when we're looking at Habakkuk, and we see this in the book of Habakkuk, you know, what are they doing? Therefore the law is slacked, and the right doth never go forth, for the wicked doth beset the righteous. Therefore right goeth forth perverted. Okay? So the wicked, what is the wicked doing? They're messing with the crown of your head. Like Noph and Taphanes. They were feeding on the crown of the children of Israel's head. And as a result of that, it was causing a perversion. Now I'm not talking about literally like cannibalism. But what I'm talking about is they're perverting the DNA in our bodies, whether it be through vaccines, whether it be through drugs, whether it be through any kind of DNA manipulation. And let me tell you something about that. When we speak about DNA manipulation, when you're sitting there, especially in America, you know, I was gone three years in Europe. I'm going back to Europe as well. But three years over there, we do have some, uh, some <laughs> Monsanto crops over there, Monsanto seeds, where you get seedless watermelon, seedless grapes, but it's not as prevalent in Europe as it is in America. Same thing with bread. Uh, we have a lot of non-GMO, genetically modified breads and grains in Europe, whereas in America, it's very hard to find that. Uh, when it comes to being seedless, you're just breaking the commandment of God. God said, let every seed bring forth of its kind. But instead, they give you seedless. Seedless is totally contrary to the good words God or the word of God because you have mixed that seed with something else to make it hybrid and therefore it has no life in it left. All right. So what does all these things do? It alters your DNA. They're feeding on your head. Nuff and Taphanes are feeding on your head. The same thing with Habakkuk when he talks about the Chaldeans, the wicked. They're doing something with the crown of your head. They have beset your crown. They've beset you. The righteous are beset and it's causing you to pervert your own judgment. You know, when your body, when the temple of God, which you are the temple of God, when your temple is not functioning properly, it's very hard to have the right connection with our Heavenly Father. Don't you think? Amazing. All right, let's move on. Habakkuk. Chapter 1 here, verse 5. Look ye among the nations, and behold, and wonder marvelously. For behold, a work shall be wrought in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and impetuous nation that march through the breadth of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their law, their majesty proceed from themselves. Now friends, I'm going to tell you something. Again, it's a twofold meaning here. Yep, the Chaldeans, they march through the land. They're an impetuous nation. And they march through the breadth of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. Is that not right? Is that what, is that what we're seeing in modern times with our NATO forces? And unfortunately, our good men and women who are wonderful soldiers that are fighting what we believe for freedoms. We're finding more and more, are we really fighting for freedom in the modern days? I mean, have we ever thought about how many nations that we are actually occupying? You know, think about it. We went to war with Japan. Well, yeah, Japan, they, they attacked us first. We still occupy Japan. We still have our military bases there. Korea, well, Korea got divided after World War II. It was a province of Japan, got divided between Russia and the United States. I think it was uh, Parallel Line 38 was a dividing line. Then later in 1950, we have the Korean War. U.S. Uh, supports uh, the South Koreans. The North Koreans uh, communist side is supported by the Chinese and the Russians. And we fight each other, and the line doesn't move very much. But we go into war with them anyway and do it just the same. 
we occupy South Korea. It's not really our land, but we occupy it. What about Germany after World War II? What happened? The Russians got east, the U.S. got the west. Well, the Russians ended up leaving after the fall of communism, but has the U.S. ever left? No. You might say we're an ally, but you'd be surprised at the laws there, still under U.S. law. We, they might have their own uh, leaders, but it's still under U.S. law. All right? You can look at Iraq. And see, World War II is a little different, because we do realize we did liberate the countries. Poland's still heavily influenced by America. But then look at Iraq. We blame Iraq for 9-11 when it was actually Saudi men that were involved with 9-11. And there's enough out there that says it's a conspiracy and it's not true anyway. Who knows? But, you know, and I can agree with a lot of the things that are said about the conspiracies as well. I can understand their points. But my, my issue is here, Saudi Arabia being the most guilty party, but we never went to war with them. Instead, we went to war with Iraq. Mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction. Never had weapons of mass destruction. Now we've been financing this war with Syria, trying to topple Bashar al-Assad, according to the book of Isaiah, when God says that he's a, he is a stronghold for, the, for Ephraim. And I can take you in other scriptures as well. It tells us it's totally wrong what we're doing there. All right? But it's not to say we don't have good men and women in the military. I think it's just being misused by those that are in power. All right? That's my point there. Now, so we go on. So they're possessing dwelling places. They are terrible and dreadful. Their law and their majesty proceed from themselves, right? But here's what gets interesting. If you look at this in the Hebraic language here, which you will not believe, though it be, we don't, it doesn't even say told you in Hebrew. It says right here, to amenu ki ya su bar. It's a fad, as we say in modern Hebrew, a book. In other words, what's transcribed, though it be inscribed, or though it be written, it's, katav is the word for written, but safeh is a book. In other words, though it be in a book, aminu, ta'aminu, all right, that's, that's really being said to you, which is in a book. And that's the part we don't get to see in there. Yeah, it's being told to you, but it's in a book. All right? That there's a, the Chaldeans that bitter and impetuous nation that marched through the breadth of the earth to possess what? The dwelling place? Do you know that the very word for this here, for dwelling place here, mi shakanot, is a tabernacle. If you look that up in Hebrew language there in the book of Exodus, there's so, every word for tabernacle is the same thing. They're not just, they're not just possessing the houses over, say, in Iraq or Syria or whatever the case may be. It's your temple. So when they go to mess with the crown of your head, like Nuff and Tapani's feet upon the crown of your head, your DNA, to affect your DNA, but they're doing it for what reason? To be able to possess your body. Because you are the temple of God. Didn't think about it like that. And yet, it, like I said, it's a compound meaning. It can go either way, right? So, now, let's continue on. Isaiah 29. It says it's written. It's, it's, it's actually, they said they'll say to you, or they told you that it's in a book. What book's it in? It's in Isaiah 29. Right? Verse 10. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of a deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes, the prophets in your heads, the seers, hath he covered. And the vision, all this is becoming to you as the words of a writing that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the writing is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Now, you might say, brother, how do you mean that this is what, this is what we're reading in Habakkuk? Because what is it? The judgment, the law, we can't, and I'm not saying, you know, listen to me, I'm not saying we got to keep the law. That's not what I'm talking about. Although we read in Revelations, they have the testimony of Jesus Christ and they keep the commandments. I do believe when we say keep the law, I'm not talking about 663 laws that we have as Jews, but I'm talking about the Ten Commandments. And that's something that I think that every Christian believes that they should keep. That thou shall not kill, thou shall not covet your neighbor's wife, etc. The simple things, those that can fit on the table of your heart, right? That's what we should keep, right? So, but it comes down though that Israel, they're blind, they can't see it, it's blocked from them. Why? Because they're feeding upon your head. 
Let's move on down. Let's go back to Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. Look ye among the nations, and behold, and wonder marvelously, for behold, a work shall, we, shall be wrought in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and impetuous nation, and march through the breadth of the earth to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. And as I said, that's also naturally besides spiritually. This is just U.S. military presence abroad. And as I said, we have... We possess South Korea, Japan, uh, we know Vietnam, we, we realize from the Second World War. And it's not that we, just, we possess all these countries, I realize that, that's not the point there. I pulled this up because of the fact that we have such a huge military presence all over the world. Africa, Middle East, uh, it's amazing how much military presence we have. Now I don't think we're so much in Yemen right now because of all the problems going on down there in Yemen, but just everywhere in the world. You know, it's just something we can look at. So let's move on, though, for sake of time. Let's get into the book of Revelation, chapter 17. The reason I want to go here over into Revelation is because we have to look at the modern-day Babylon and Chaldeans. Revelation 17, And upon her forehead was written a name, was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore dost thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. By the way, there's your Babylon and there's your Chaldeans. The Chaldeans are those that carry, that's the beast, the power, the military might. Like it was in Nebuchadnezzar's day. He used the Chaldeans to go and topple Jerusalem and bring back the inhabitants. It's still the same way today. In, a, in, in the battles, we go out there and we battle whatever Rome really wants us to battle. And when I say Rome, I'm not, this is not to pick on the Catholic Church, the Catholic people. This is just telling you the way things go. Rome is so, the Vatican itself is so involved in the political arena of the world today. Every world leader goes to the Rome. Why? Why is Rome so involved in politics? Well, they're, I believe they're a mystery Babylon. Now, then we deal with, of course, the Chaldeans, the military arm, but also a spiritual military as well that are doing what? Like it was in the day of Nebuchadnezzar. Bring the Jews to us. Maybe not just the Jews per se, but the true believers of Yeshua. Bring them in as captives. Alter the DNA so that they cannot bring forth correct judgment. Think about it. And then we find in Revelation 18.4, For all nations have drunken of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through abundance of her delicacies. We find a lot of this in Jeremiah chapter 50. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Look at Isaiah chapter 48. I want you to see something here. O thou that wouldest hearken to my, excuse me, O that thou wouldest hearken to my commandment, then would thy peace be as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also would be as the sand, and the offspring of thy body like grains thereof. His name would not be cut off nor destroyed from before me. Go ye forth from Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing, declare ye, tell this, utter it even unto the end of the earth, say ye, the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. Doesn't that sound like Revelation 18.4? Come out of her, my people. Remember, in the chapter before Revelation 17, Mystery Babylon is also has a beast, a military wing of her. And God commands his children in Revelation 18:4, My come out of her, my people, and be ye not partakers of her sins and her plagues. And then we see the same thing, very similar to that in Isaiah chapter 48. And this has to be a future prophecy in Isaiah chapter 48, because it says his servant. 
You know, the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. That's all the house of Israel. And I believe when we speak of the house of Israel and the house of Judah together, that's all 12 tribes, that many of the house of Israel are believers that are in all of these church systems today. They're Methodists, Baptists, Presbyterians, Pentecostals, whatever, non-denominationals, Catholics. They're in all of these. But you see, the Lord wants you to come out as a separated people. To stand upon His Word is what He wants. Just stand upon His Word. It's not to look down upon somebody else because they have a different belief, but to come out of her, my people, and say what? The Lord hath redeemed His servant, Yaakov, Jacob. And Jacob isn't just limited to our brothers and sisters over in modern day Israel. Jacob is all 12 tribes. We are living in a day today where God is here wanting to redeem all 12 tribes. I personally believe that God will do this through the two witnesses. And I know there's many that believe that, you know, well, the church will be gone when the two witnesses come here, Steve. It's just the way it is. You know, but think about it. how in the world can the church, how can the church go in a rapture when they all disagree with one another? There's infighting and bickering and everything else. And the purity of the Word of God. You know, I realize that right now Rome is, is doing an effort to bring the churches back together as one. Now, I don't agree with what they're doing because it's just going into a system. You know, as a very well-known minister said uh, recently and has been promoting, several of them have been promoting that the Reformation is over. That, in fact, it was said by one prominent evangelist that it was, it's, a, it's an evil spirit speaking about the Reformation, calling it a church split. Biggest church split ever. But have we forgot what the Reformation was about to begin with? Have we forgot about the Inquisition? And today we are dealing with a modern Inquisition once again. Jews and Christians both were put to death because they did not agree or because they had a different opinion. I'm not here to go bash someone else or bash someone else's beliefs. But I do believe that we need to stand for truth. Stand for God's word. We appreciate you. We thank you for watching. Those of you that would like to support this work, please visit our website, israelinewslive.org. You can be a contributor there. Or if you would like to do it by mail, we will also include our address at, on the screen here right below you there as you're closing out. I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you. God bless you. And thank you for watching.